Our first stop takes us to the heart of downtown Los Angeles, to the halls of the Cecil Hotel, a place steeped in its own unsettling history. It's here in 2013 that a young Canadian student named Elisa Lam checked in, only to vanish without a trace. Elisa's disappearance sparked a media frenzy, fueled by a chilling piece of evidence released by the LAPD elevator footage from the day she vanished. In the grainy video, Elisa exhibits bizarre behavior, pressing multiple buttons, hiding in the corner, peeking out as if someone or something is after her. The footage, widely circulated online, captivated the public imagination and fueled countless theories. Was Elisa suffering a mental health crisis? Was she running from an unseen pursuer? Or was something more sinister at play? Days turned into weeks, and the search for Elisa intensified, but no new leads surfaced. The mystery deepened, casting a long shadow over the already infamous Cecil Hotel. Weeks after Elisa Lamb's disappearance, guests at the Cecil Hotel began complaining about the water pressure. Some reported a strange, foul taste coming from their taps. Little did they know the answer to this unsettling mystery lay hidden in plain sight atop the hotel roof. Maintenance workers responding to the complaints made a gruesome discovery. Elisa Lamb's body submerged in one of the hotel's water tanks. The news sent shockwaves through the city and beyond. How did Elisa end up in the water tank? And how was it possible that no one noticed anything until weeks later? The official investigation concluded that Elisa's death was an accidental drowning, possibly brought on by bipolar disorder with which she had been diagnosed. But for many, the official explanation did little to quell the unease surrounding the case. The circumstances of Elisa's death, coupled with the unsettling elevator footage, seemed to point towards something more sinister. To this day, Elisa Lamb's case remains a chilling reminder of the mysteries that lurk beneath the surface of even the most ordinary places. Our journey takes us next to the rural farmlands of Missouri, where a discovery in a field would ignite a mystery that has baffled codebreakers for decades. It's here in 1999 that the body of 41-year-old Ricky McCormick was found. Ricky's life had been marked by hardship. He struggled to read and write, relying on his family to help him navigate the world. He was known to frequent the streets, often seen jotting down notes in a cryptic language only he seemed to understand. When his body was discovered in that desolate field, Hope for answers seemed to disappear with him. There were no obvious signs of foul play, no witnesses, no clear motive. The case quickly went cold, leaving Ricky's family with more questions than answers. But within Ricky's pockets, investigators found something peculiar. Two notes, filled with a jumbled assortment of letters, numbers, and symbols. Could these cryptic messages hold the key to unraveling the mystery of his untimely death? Imagine a time before telephones, before cars were commonplace, a time when life moved at a slower pace, especially in rural Bavaria. It's 1922. In the small German village of Groburn, nestled amongst rolling farmland, sits the Hinterkaifeck farmstead. Home to the Gruber family, Andreas, his wife Kazilia, their two adult children Victoria and Joseph, young Joseph's wife and their two children, including a two-year-old toddler. Life on the farm was quiet, routine, some might even say idyllic. But this peaceful existence was about to be shattered, forever remembered for its brutality and the unsettling mystery that still surrounds it. Because on a cold day in early April, a horrifying discovery would send chills down the spines of those living in the surrounding areas. Days had passed since anyone had seen or heard from the Gruber family. Concerned neighbors, their worries growing with each passing hour, decided to approach the farm. What they found was a scene of unimaginable horror. The entire family, all six of them, lay lifeless, brutally murdered inside the barn. The murder weapon, a mattock, a common farm tool was found at the scene, left behind almost carelessly. But it was the details of the crime that truly unsettled those who dared to investigate. It appeared that the family had been lured to the barn one by one, murdered in a methodical and terrifying manner. Whoever committed this heinous act didn't just disappear into the night, Evidence suggested something even more chilling. The killer or killers had remained at the farm for days after the murders. They had fed the cattle, eaten the family's food, even slept in their beds. Footprints found in the snow leading to the farm, yet none leaving, only deepened the mystery. The killer had come to Hinterkaifeck, committed a horrific crime, and then vanished without a trace. Who would do such a thing and why? 
These questions haunted investigators then and continue to fascinate and frustrate us even now. Despite a thorough investigation at the time, with over 100 suspects questioned, the Hinterkaifeck murders remain unsolved. Theories abound, ranging from a family feud to a robbery gone wrong, even whispers of darker motives. But the truth, like the footprints in the snow leading to that isolated farmhouse, seems to lead nowhere. The Hinterkaifeck murders stand as a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface of seemingly peaceful communities. The isolation of the farmstead, the brutality of the crime, the eerie presence of the killer in the days after, all contribute to the enduring fascination with the Hinterkaifeck murders. This case, shrouded in mystery, continues to capture the imagination. Our journey into the unknown takes us next to Germany, 1984 a country grappling with its own internal divisions, a time of political tension and societal change. It's against this backdrop that we encounter the perplexing case of Gunther Stoll, a man whose life ended as mysteriously as it began. Gunther, a food technician by trade, was a man of routine, described by those who knew him as quiet, unremarkable even. Yet, on a seemingly ordinary evening, he would become forever entangled with the inexplicable. It began with a seemingly normal dinner with his wife, but during the meal, Gunther suddenly became agitated, claiming that they were after him. These cryptic pronouncements, out of character for the usually reserved Gunther, alarmed his wife. But before she could delve deeper into his fears, he abruptly left their apartment. Later that night, Gunther was found in his wrecked car, severely injured. The scene was peculiar, to say the least. He was discovered several miles from his abandoned car, naked from the waist down, with only a cryptic note clutched in his hand. On that piece of paper, a single word scrawled in hurried handwriting, Yogtsi. Gunther clung to life for several hours, enough time to tell authorities that he had been attacked by men from the woods. He claimed they had drugged him, causing the accident. But who were these men, and what did the word Yogtsi signify? Despite a thorough investigation, authorities were unable to corroborate Gunther's story. No evidence of the men he described was ever found. The word Yogtsi, seemingly meaningless, yielded no clues theories swirled. Was Gunther suffering from a mental break? Was he involved in something far more sinister than anyone could have imagined? Had he stumbled upon a secret society, its members marked by the cryptic word? Or was it, as some believe, simply a random act of violence, a tragic case of mistaken identity? Years later the case remains cold, a frustrating puzzle with no solution. The word Yuxi, like a phantom echo, continues to haunt the case. Was it a dying man's delirious ramblings or a vital clue forever lost in translation? Deep in the heart of Slovakia, where ancient forests meet towering peaks, lies a place of breathtaking beauty and unsettling mystery, the Tribeck Mountains. Part of the sprawling Carpathian range, these mountains hold secrets whispered on the wind, tales of those who ventured into their depths and vanished without a trace. Unlike other mountainous regions known for treacherous terrain and unpredictable weather, the Tribeck Mountains are deceptively serene. Their slopes are gentle, the trails well marked, attracting hikers and nature enthusiasts seeking solace in their tranquil embrace. Yet beneath this veneer of tranquility lies an unsettling truth. For decades, people have disappeared within these mountains, their fates shrouded in mystery. One of the earliest cases dates back to 1929 when Forrester A. Sam Saley disappeared during heavy snowfall. Despite extensive searches, his body was never recovered, leading to speculation beyond simple tragedy. In 1939, Walter Fisher, a factory worker, went missing during a hike. He was found months later alive but severely burned and in a disturbed psychological state with no explanation for his condition. He spent the rest of his life in a mental facility. Then, in 1966, a married couple, Jan and Alina, vanished, leaving only their parked car near the forest. Despite widespread searches, they were never found. These disappearances have fueled an urban legend, with some people attributing them to accidents or political reasons, while others believe in something more sinister. Tammy Lynn Leppert was a name on everyone's lips in the early 80s. A fresh face with piercing blue eyes, Tammy had that intangible it factor that made Hollywood take notice. She landed roles in big-budget films like Scarface and was on track to become a household name. But behind the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, a darkness was beginning to creep into Tammy's life. Friends and family noticed a change in her demeanor. 
the once bubbly and outgoing teenager became withdrawn and anxious, plagued by a growing sense of paranoia. Tammy confided in those closest to her, expressing fears that someone was out to get her, that her life was in danger. These claims, dismissed by some as the anxieties of a young woman navigating the pressures of Hollywood, would later take on a chilling significance. Because in the summer of 1983, at the height of her burgeoning career, Tammy Lynn Leppert vanished without a trace. The weeks following Tammy's disappearance were a blur of frantic searches and dead-end leads. Police investigated every lead, from disgruntled acquaintances to the darker underbelly of the film industry, but Tammy's trail had gone cold. Some investigators focused on Tammy's claims of being stalked and threatened, exploring the possibility that her disappearance was linked to foul play. Others pointed to her increasingly erratic behavior, speculating that drug use or mental instability might have played a role in her vanishing. Years turned into decades and the mystery of Tammy Lynn Leppert's disappearance only deepened. Whispers of her case still echo through the back lots of Hollywood, a cautionary tale of the dark side of fame and the fragility of life, even under the bright lights. And as time passes, the hope of finding Tammy alive dwindles, leaving behind a lingering question. What happened to the promising young starlet on that summer day in 1983? Imagine a scene of chaos and fear, classrooms emptied, hospitals overflowing, parents desperately clinging to their children. This was the reality in Kosovo in the 1990s as a wave of illness swept through the region, targeting its most vulnerable population, schoolgirls. It began with whispers of strange symptoms, dizziness, nausea, fainting spells. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, the number of afflicted students skyrocketed, overwhelming hospitals and leaving medical professionals baffled. The symptoms were consistent, pointing to some form of poisoning, but the source remained elusive. Was it a contaminated water supply, a tainted batch of food, or something more sinister, a deliberate act of poisoning targeting these young women? As fear and suspicion gripped the region, the search for answers intensified, leading investigators down a path shrouded in uncertainty and speculation. With no clear culprit emerging from the investigations, theories surrounding the Kosovo student poisonings began to multiply. Some medical professionals, unable to pinpoint a physical cause for the widespread illness, suggested the culprit might be mass hysteria, a phenomenon where shared anxiety manifests in physical symptoms. Others, however, remained unconvinced. The sheer scale of the outbreak, coupled with the consistency of symptoms, pointed to a more tangible, external cause. Whispers of a deliberate poisoning campaign, perhaps politically motivated or fueled by ethnic tensions, circulated throughout the region. Despite years of investigation and countless theories, the Kosovo student poisonings remain an unsettling mystery. The true cause of the outbreak, whether a physical ailment, a social phenomenon, or a deliberate act, continues to elude definitive answers, and the victims, now grown women, are left to grapple with the lingering effects of that terrifying time, forever marked by an invisible enemy that left them grappling for air and searching for answers. For centuries, stories have circulated of a strange phenomenon, a celestial gift left in the wake of meteor showers, a substance unlike anything found on Earth, a jelly-like material appearing as if fallen from the sky, star jelly. These accounts, often dismissed as folklore or misidentifications, paint a picture of something both intriguing and unsettling. Imagine walking through a field, still damp from a recent meteor shower, only to stumble upon a patch of translucent, gelatinous goo. Is it the remnants of a disintegrated meteorite, a tangible piece of the cosmos deposited on our planet? Or could it be something else entirely, a biological anomaly, a rare atmospheric event, or perhaps, as some believe, evidence of extraterrestrial life? The more we delve into the accounts of star jelly, the deeper the mystery becomes, challenging our understanding of the natural world and hinting at possibilities that lie beyond our current comprehension. While the idea of star jelly might seem like something out of science fiction, there have been numerous attempts to analyze and explain this enigmatic substance. Some scientists propose that it could be a form of cyanobacteria capable of producing a gelatinous sheath or perhaps the egg masses of amphibians deposited by birds or other animals. However, these explanations often fail to account for the timing of star jelly appearances, often coinciding with meteor showers and the sheer strangeness of the substance itself. Samples collected and analyzed have yielded inconclusive results, leaving the door open to more speculative theories. Could star jelly be a form of extraterrestrial organic material deposited on Earth during meteor showers? 
or is it a manifestation of some unknown atmospheric or biological process, a puzzle yet to be pieced together by science? Picture a quaint farmhouse nestled amidst the sprawling cornfields of Indiana. It's 1940, and the Hackler family, like many others in Odin, live a simple life. But their tranquil existence is about to be shattered by a series of bizarre events. A fire erupts in broad daylight seemingly out of thin air, the flames are quickly extinguished, but a sense of unease settles over the Hackler family. Little do they know, this is just the beginning. The fires continue, each one more baffling than the last. The local fire brigade, baffled by the seemingly impossible blazes, are called to the Hackler farm again and again. The once peaceful farmhouse has transformed into a crucible of fear. News of the Indiana 28 fires spread like wildfire, captivating the nation. Theories abound, each more outlandish than the last. Some whisper of poltergeist activity suggesting an angry spirit is trapped within the home's walls. Others speculate about spontaneous combustion, a rare but documented phenomenon. Desperate for answers, the hacklers turn to anyone who might be able to shed light on the mysterious events. But the answers remain elusive, hidden somewhere in the ashes and the charred remnants of their belongings. Deep in the heart of Scotland, nestled amongst the rugged cliffs and hidden caves, lies a legend so dark, so unsettling, it's chilled generations to the bone. This is the tale of Sawney Bean and his clan, a story whispered around campfires and recounted in hushed tones. It's the 15th century, a time of political turmoil and social unrest. Travelers making their way through the Scottish countryside are disappearing without a trace, their fates unknown. Fear grips the region as whispers of unspeakable acts begin to circulate. The disappearances center around Benane Head, a stretch of coastline notorious for its treacherous cliffs and hidden coves. It is here, according to legend, that Sawney Bean, a butcher by trade, sought refuge with his wife and growing family. But their existence was far from ordinary. They lived outside the bounds of society, their survival fueled by a horrifying secret. Their isolation bred darkness, their desperation twisting into something monstrous. They say Sawney Bean and his kin, over generations, grew to a clan of 48, bound by blood and a gruesome hunger that could only be satisfied by human flesh. The stories tell of unsuspecting travelers lured into the Bean's labyrinthine caves, never to be seen again. Their belongings, stripped and discarded, would be the only evidence of their grim fate. The Bean clan, it was said, were masters of deception, their gruesome acts concealed by the remote and unforgiving landscape. For years, the Bean clan thrived in their macabre existence, their reign of terror growing with each passing season. The locals lived in fear, their whispers of the cannibal clan falling on deaf ears. The king, however, tired of the unsolved disappearances and the terror gripping his people, vowed to bring the perpetrators to justice. The search for the Bean Clan was long and arduous, the rugged terrain offering countless places to hide, but eventually, the king's men, guided by bloodhounds and driven by a thirst for justice, stumbled upon the gruesome truth hidden within the caves of Benane Head. The details of their capture and punishment are as gruesome as the crimes themselves. The Sawney Bean Clan became a cautionary tale, a legend whispered through the ages a chilling reminder of the monsters that can lurk just beyond the edges of civilization. The bustling streets of New York City, a place teeming with life, can also be a place of profound anonymity. It's a city of millions where lives intersect and then disappear, leaving behind only whispers and questions. On September 10, 2001, Sneha Ann Phillip, a young and promising doctor, vanished from her Battery Park City apartment. She was last seen on security footage, shopping at a nearby store, her face a picture of normalcy, unaware of the storm that was about to engulf the city. Sneha's disappearance, initially a missing person case like countless others, took on a horrifying new dimension just hours later when the Twin Towers fell, casting a long shadow over the city and the world. The chaos and devastation of that day left many families searching for loved ones, clinging to hope amidst the rubble and despair. Sneha, who lived just blocks from the World Trade Center, became one of the missing, her fate tragically intertwined with the day's horrific events. Her family and friends clung to the possibility that she, a dedicated physician, had rushed towards the danger, attempting to aid the injured in those chaotic hours. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and still, there was no sign of Sneha. The city, slowly rebuilding from the ashes, held its breath, hoping against hope for her return. 
Had she perished in the towers, a silent hero lost in the rubble? Or had something more sinister transpired in those final hours before the attacks? The investigation into Sneha's disappearance was hampered by the sheer scale of the 9-11th's tragedy. Records were destroyed, witnesses were gone, and the city was consumed by grief and loss. Despite the challenges, her family refused to give up, their determination to uncover the truth unwavering. Years passed, and the mystery of Sneha Ann Phillips' disappearance deepened. Theories abounded, whispers of a troubled marriage, financial woes, and even a secret life fueled speculation. Yet, concrete answers remained elusive. The official investigation, after years of dead ends and unanswered questions, declared Sneha a victim of the 9-11's attacks. Her name added to the long list of those lost that day. But for her family, the questions linger. Did Sneha perish in the towers, a selfless hero answering a final call to duty? Or did her disappearance have nothing to do with that fateful day, her fate forever shrouded in the anonymity of the city she called home? These are just a few of the countless mysteries that continue to haunt our world. Each story, a chilling reminder of the fragility of life and the enduring power of the unknown. Stories of lives cut short, of questions left unanswered, of shadows lurking just beyond our understanding. These stories stay with us, not just because they are unsolved, but because they reflect something deep within the human experience. Our need to understand, to find meaning in chaos, to seek closure in the face of the unknown. Which of these mysteries resonated most with you? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more explorations into the dark and enigmatic corners of our world.